Andaç. Dur. Flooding of the tunnels in process. When people suggested this before, it looked as if they wouldn't use this method. But here we are, they are flooding the tunnels with instant results. Are they going to surrender en masse? Israel actually finished installing five large water pumps in November. Each one has the capacity to move thousands of cubic meters of water per hour. So imagine pumping sea water with just two pumps into a tunnel network that covers about 500 meters squared. They can get the job done in a few days. Although the true picture of the tunnel infrastructure is not known yet, whether they are watertight or whether there are large leakages that will absorb water, Depending on the rate of absorption, the high-pressure pumps should be able to flood them quickly. By the way, Egypt flooded the tunnels on their own side of the border. They did that as recent as 2015. Some reports claim that they not only used water to flood the tunnels, they also used sewage. This is a very huge task considering the tunnel network is estimated to be several hundred kilometers long. While they are using high-pressure water pumps to flood the tunnels, it might still not be sufficient to flood all of them. This is because the tunnels don't interconnect with each other. That's why they have so many shafts and entry points. About 800 of them have been discovered already. So talking about the effectiveness of flooding the tunnels, if there are high grounds and chambers within the tunnel, like this one where their top commanders hold their meetings, and possibly this is where they hide. Is there a way they can block off some sections of the tunnels to prevent water from flooding these sections? How about drains inside the tunnels since they have convenience facilities down there? There must be a drainage system. How will the drainage system cope with the tunnels being flooded? Maybe they didn't put all this into consideration during the design stage of the tunnels. And like we've seen in some videos the IDF released, where they installed blast-proof doors to ward off any invasion. These doors might be airtight, but are they waterproof? Anyway, for them to choose to flood the tunnels, they must have intel that it won't affect the hostages. Of course, going by the testimonies of some released people, most of them were held above ground. So this might just serve as a negotiating tactic. If they see that the tunnels are about to be flooded, they are about to be inundated with seawater, they might quickly release the remaining hostages to force the IDF to stop flooding the tunnels. Or maybe they might just decide to surrender en masse. Who knows what will happen? If someone is inside the tunnel and suddenly seawater reaches the person's knee, no one will tell him to quickly move to the nearest shaft and surrender. Yes. That's the main objective of flooding the tunnels with seawater to force everyone hiding down there to come out. Yes, going by what this Hamas spokesman said, that the tunnels are for them alone, not for civilians, it means that flooding these tunnels and the effects that will come from it will only affect combatants. البعض يتساءل وهذا سؤال رائج وشائع يعني من قام بتشييد 500 كيلومتر من الأنفاق لماذا لم يشيد مآوي يلجأ إليها المدنيون خلال القصف 
نحن شيدنا الأنفاق لأنه لا نملك ما ندفع به عن أنفسنا من القتل والاستهداف هذه الأنفاق من أجل أن نحمي أنفسنا من الطائرات نحمي مقاتلين من الأنفاق أما أما القطاع غزة فأنت تعلم والجميع يعلم بأنه 75% منه لاجئين واللاجئين هو مسؤولية الأمم المتحدة في حمايتهم مسؤولية الاحتلال في أن يقدم كل تبعا لاتفاقية جنيف الدولية أن يقدم لهم كل الخدمات وهم تحت الاحتلال